So Mr. Woodard left off starting to talk about stress and these next few slides might be some of the most important slides we give you all year long. Stress is obviously a hot topic, especially in today's world with pandemics and elections and everybody's stressed. And that makes sense. And like Mr. Woodard said, some stress is actually good, especially from an evolutionary perspective. We need stress. But knowing more about stress and knowing how to handle stress, some ways to cope with stress, it's always empowering. And that's what these new next few slides are about. So first of all, the physical stress response, there's two types of stress that we talk about. And one is acute stress, which comes on suddenly. It has kind of a defined beginning and defined end versus chronic stress, which is constant. It's always happening. It's this continuous state of stress over a long period of time. I usually equate this with pain. If you think about pain, because we hear about acute and chronic pain in the medical field. So if you're hammering something and you hit your finger, that's acute pain. It's happened right now. Give it a few minutes and the pain will go away. Whereas some people have really bad backs. They've slipped a disc and their back is bad until they have surgery. Some people's surgery doesn't even correct it and they live in a chronic state of pain all the time. Okay, so acute versus chronic. So whether or not you're dealing with acute or chronic stress, here are some ways to help reduce stress. And none of these are earth shattering, but they've been scientifically proven to help people cope with stress and reduce stress. So number one, exercise, even just taking a walk, taking a walk, particularly outside in nature, always a good way to reduce stress, healthy diet, eating right putting the right nutrients into your body. Good way to reduce stress. Uh, we always laugh about this one when I bring it up, but sleep, getting enough sleep. Teenagers should be getting somewhere in the eight, nine hour range of sleep every night. So do your best to get as much sleep as you can, especially as the semester goes on and more homework um, comes at you. You know, with COVID year here, we have more time to do the homework. Make sure you manage your time well so that you're getting enough sleep. It's kind of a unique opportunity to get enough sleep. Relaxation exercises or meditation. Meditation is becoming a really highly studied um, aspect of psychology. We'll do more with meditation as the year goes along, but meditation and learning how to relax the body, how to relax the mind helps with stress. Social support. Making sure that you're forming those communities, staying attached to friends and family, and yes, do this safely but give somebody a hug give someone in your family a hug hugging releases oxytocin and that is a um, hormone that helps you feel better it's called the hug hormone or the love hormone we'll talk about that later it was also mentioned in your book find things that make you smile and laugh go watch a funny movie read a funny book hang out with somebody that you find really funny those are those types of things that laughter and smiling help again alleviate some of the stresses and remember we mentioned facial feedback that just smiling at other people helps you feel better so if you're feeling a little agitated if you're feeling a little stressed out try taking a walk and as somebody passes you smile at them because that sm that act of smiling can actually help reduce your own stress Take deep breaths. Breathing has been found, it actually goes hand in hand with meditation. Breathing has been found to calm the body, relax the body. Focusing on breathing helps you kind of, helps you get focused um, on that particular um, breath rather than worrying about all the other stuff that you're, that you're stressed out about. Okay. Another very important topic in today's world and in the psych field is, of course, post-traumatic stress disorder. We'll talk about that more as the year goes along. There's some good videos on the PowerPoint that we've uh, embedded. Post-traumatic stress disorder is a stress reaction that's characterized by some pretty um, uh, prominent features. Number one, disturbing recurring flashbacks. Uh, again, using a, somebody that's been to war uh, is a very good way to think about post-traumatic stress disorder, though it can take um, many different events can certainly trigger 
um, post-traumatic stress disorder. So disturbing recurring flashbacks. You know, somebody that's been in battle in the Middle East might wake up in the middle of the night and have that flashback of um, the bomb going off or going on the um, going on the march in the hills and being attacked. Um, it might not happen in the middle of the night. It might be the middle of the day walking down the street. So that those recurrent flashbacks. Oftentimes, um, people with post-traumatic stress disorder, uh, they they are they are numb to some of the memories that pop up, or they do everything they can consciously and subconsciously to avoid those memories, so block those memories out. And then hyperarousal, high levels of anxiety. If you think about with hyperarousal. You know, somebody, um, I had a, a friend of mine who uh, fought in the Iraq war and he talked about you, you, you're walking down the street and you don't know what car the bomb is in or under. That you are constantly vigilant looking at cars as you walk down streets because you, you don't know which one might blow up. Well, somebody in that situation might come back to the United States and be walking down the street with cars on either side, and they're still in that hyper arousal state. They're still looking at cars because it's constantly embedded in them that they have to be careful of the cars that are around them because that's what they live through for nine, 12, um, or more months, hyper arousal. And post-traumatic stress disorder can actually last, last forever. Um, there's a older video here, but you can see some um, images of people that were in shell shock. And that's what the old name for post-traumatic stress disorder was. Real quick, let me take you through the general adaptation syndrome or GAS. Um, it's a pattern of physical responses to any serious chronic stressor. Um, the first part of the general adaptation syndrome can apply to most stressors, but if that stressor becomes chronic, that's where you see all three stages. So the first level is or uh, the first stage is the alarm stage and you'll see there at the bottom this red line is your normal level of resistance well you um, get a parking ticket and you have to appear in front of a judge your level of resistance might start to go above your level of stress might go above your normal level of resistance as you resist even though you're really stressed about going in front of a judge you still work up the courage, you go to the courthouse, you go in front of the judge, and things work out okay, and you successfully resist. And so you can see that goes back down to the normal level of resistance. Now, that's a simple, easy um, example. But what if that stress becomes chronic? Go back to that example that we talked about earlier that was on one of the quizzes about chain migration. What if you're migrating, you're, you're an immigrant to a new country, and with chain migration, you actually get into a community with folks from your native country so you can learn to adapt to your new situation together. Well, what if you come to a new country and you can't find people from your former country? You don't have a new community. Now you're in a place with a foreign language, no job, you're just trying to survive. And what if you can't get a job? What if after months you can't find other people that will um, that can help you and that are from your former country and you can relate to? What if you feel extremely isolated? And again, you continue to not be able to find work and you're just trying to scrape by and it goes on for months and months and months. Well, at that point, your body might go and stay above the normal level of resistance. So you just keep on going and keep on going, and eventually your body will actually wear down so much that you can go into a stage of exhaustion. And that can cause physical illness, uh, extreme as measures its death, but your body starts to wear down and can't fight off uh, illnesses that might attack it. Okay, I've talked for nine minutes. I'll be done and let Mr. Woodard take it from here.